Hello, on behalf of Pastor Gordon, welcome to the YouTube channel of Berean Vaughn, aka Pinnacle Church. We trust that the message you will hear today will be a blessing to you, and we encourage you to hit the thumbs up icon to like this video and even share it with someone else. If you are not already a subscriber, feel free to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss another one of our videos. Enjoy the message and be blessed. Reading from Esther 4 verses 13 and 14. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Think not. Then he says in verse 14, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, that means if you don't speak, if you don't say anything at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews. It shall arise. Look at somebody and say, it shall arise. Praise God. Enlargement and deliverance shall arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows if this is your purpose, that you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I'm speaking to you today from the subject divine alignment. A divine alignment. Pastor Mark, as we study the book, the Old Testament books, and we look at the Israelites and their behavior and their tendency, we see a proclivity, a propensity for them to want to control, to have structures of control, and structures of power, their own structures of control and power. And it's nothing different from us. I mean, we like to have our own control in our lives. We like to make our own decisions because we know what we like and we know what we want and nobody knows us like we know ourselves and we know what we are feeling and we want to be able to have our decisions and to make our decisions when we want to make our decisions, praise God. We also want to make sure that those who are not uh, for us, those who are against us, those who uh, would do things that uh, may adversely affect us, praise God, either intentionally sometimes or sometimes unintentionally, that we have enough power to control the decisions that others would make in uh, cases where it would impact and affect us. I want to be able to make my own choices and my own decision, and so I want to have my own power. But Israel takes it to a next level. They take, take it to a next step, and it's more, no more, uh, more uh, evident than as we read in, I believe it's 1 Samuel chapter 8, when they come to Samuel and they say to Samuel, I know that God has been taking care of us. I know that God has been leading us. I know that God has sent different rulers. I know that God has sent different judges. They call them judges. I know that we've had people like Othniel. I know we've had people like uh, Barak and uh, Deborah. I know we've had people like Samson. I know we've people like Gideon. I know we've got people like you, Samuel, a prophet, but uh, uh, I don't want you in my life anymore. We want to be like the other nations. I want to be like... I want to be like the other nations. I want to have a king. You know how they do it over there. They have a king, and, and God's been good to us, but, but we like it over there. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? And, and sometimes, isn't it interesting how God can be good to you? God can bless you. God can keep you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. God can hold you. God can be carrying you through. God can be carrying people through, and they're still not satisfied. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The thing I love about God, Sister Sharon, is that the kind of God that he is, the God that I serve, hallelujah, God that's before us this morning, the God in whose presence we are, he can just lead you. You don't have to have a big name. You don't need a big structure. You don't need a king. You don't need a reputation. You don't even need a whole lot of money, Sister Erica. Lord, have mercy. But he can give you good victories, big victories. Is there anybody out there? You've gotten some big victories and some big breakthroughs and some strong breakthroughs. And when you look back and you look at what I've been able to accomplish, little me, you really Realize it's not just a little me, it's a big God. Lord have mercy. 
working in my life. And so he's been working for them. He's using normal, regular people. God will just take a normal, regular person and, and just rise them up. Lord, have mercy. God, God will just take a nobody. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? That God will just take a nobody and the anointing comes upon you and you'll get a breakthrough. You'll get a, a breakthrough that breaks a stronghold, a, a breakthrough that tears down a wall, a, a breakthrough that destroys the Midianite the Amalekites, the spirits that are coming against you constantly through the anointing of God. God will give you a victory that is bigger than you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love him because he's the kind of God that says, I'll just take normal, regular, ordinary you. Lord have mercy. That anybody will walk past, see you on the street and think you're nobody. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. You ain't dressed up. You ain't looked up. You ain't pretty up. You ain't looking like anybody. But watch yourself because of the God that is on the inside. And God will take me and move me and destroy all the enemies inside of me. I don't look like much. I don't have the big reputation. I don't have the big name. I, I don't have people talking about me. But watch out. I've got a God who can. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Uh, they, they don't want it. Uh, they don't want him. They say, we're done with you. We're done with this style of leading these ordinary people. We want the pomp and we want the posture of a king. We want the divinity. We want, we want a man-made structure. I know you've been leading me, God. I know you've been directing me, God. I know when I have your God, all of my enemies, all of my enemies fear us. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I mean, Israel was so feared, so feared, not not because of Israel, but because of the God that was with them, that people, they came out of slavery, out of bondage, my God, and yet still people around them would fear them because of the God that was with them. And now they said, we don't want you anymore, God. Samuel looks at them and Samuel says, God, this is what the people are saying. God says to Samuel, don't worry. They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. It's what I call a power struggle now, Sister Makala. It's a power struggle. They're fighting when people are fighting against the powers that God has put in place over their lives. A power struggle has taken place and power struggles have been happening. And as you continue to study the scriptures, you continue to study the books, you continue to study uh, Israel throughout the scriptures, you'll realize that they're continually and constantly having these power struggles with God. It wasn't the first time when they spoke to Samuel and said, Samuel, we don't want you anymore. If you remember, if you go all the way back to Moses' time, all the way back to Moses, Sister Sharon, it was Moses who had a power struggle. He had two power struggles, in fact. The first power struggle came from his own family. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. It was Miriam. It was, it was Miriam. And they got up and they said, Moses, we don't like what you're doing. We don't like uh, uh, this woman that you've married. And, and, and does God not speak to anybody else? Is, is God just talking to you? Let us rise up. And, and there was a power struggle. And God says, when you touch Moses, when you touch my man, when you touch my anointed, y'all not hearing me. When you touch what God puts in place, when you touch what God has established, that's why the Bible says when God does the, when God builds the house, when God establishes it, when God puts it in place, when God's anointing is upon your life, it doesn't matter who doesn't like you, as Sister Sarah, as Sister Sally, it doesn't matter who is not, who is not for you or who is against you. When God puts you in place, when you're fighting against that person, you're fighting against God. He struck them. Uh, he struck uh, Miriam. Miriam who grabbed the tambourine, Miriam who rejoiced, Miriam who led the ladies, Miriam who was dancing uh, when they got out of Egypt. This same Miriam, he grabbed Miriam and he, uh, 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 he put leprosy upon her because of the power struggle. Aaron and Moses has to come back and appeal to God and say, God, heal her. She's, God says, all right, I'll heal her, but give her seven days. Make her learn her lesson outside of the camp. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. It wasn't the first time. The second time, another challenge came up, and this time it was broader. But it's still in the family. It's the man called Korah. Now, Korah is also a Levite, brother, uh, Pastor McCullough. A Levite is cousin. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Sometimes there's a pain in the family. Sometimes there's a problem in the family. Sometimes there's an issue in the family. Korah says, no, no, no. We don't like what you're doing. We don't like the power that you have. We don't like how things look. 
We don't like how God has put you up. Let's hold a contest. Moses says, all right, let's hold a contest. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to see who God is going to answer. You know God will answer you when God puts you in place. God will answer you. When you say, God, you put me here. I'm not moving. God will answer you. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. When you're going to the job and you say, God, I'm not getting laid off in the name of Jesus. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. No pink slip in the name of Jesus. You put me here in the name of Jesus. I am not going to move. No boss, no downsizing, no right sizing, no surplus. In the name of Jesus. They're not going to move me, not going to shift me, not going to push me out, not going to take me out. I don't care who doesn't like me. I don't care the challenges. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I, I don't care how hell is working against you. Wherever you are, in your job, in your home, in your marriage, no matter where it is, nobody can move you. When God puts you in there, he says, God will answer me. He says, let's put the buds, the, the staff in the... In the holy place, and let's see who, who, who is it. No, this is a staff that's cut off. It's dead. A rod. It's dead. There's nothing in it. But when God answers you, God will make dead things come to life. Lord have mercy. It, it wasn't the first time, Pastor McCall. And so they continued to struggle against God. They struggled against God. And they struggled against God. And when we, when we continue to struggle against God, it's a problem for us, and it's a problem in our lives. God hates these struggles. He hates these struggles against his power. He doesn't like it. It was a power struggle that got hell, that got the devil kicked out of heaven. It was a power struggle. Because he said, I'm going to make myself, Sister Sally, like the most high God. That's what he said. He said, <laughs> not just rude, rude, rude and what? Out of order. <laughs> He's out of order. He's out of alignment. He says, I'm going to make myself like the most high God. And God says, I, I'll have not, not, nothing like that. Don't even think it. One minute. Not even a second. The Bible says, I beheld him fall from heaven like lightning. Praise God. And so we don't struggle with God. That's why when you see David, David is anointed to be king. David is positioned by God. He's chosen by God. He's picked out when nobody could find him. God found him and picked him out and he's anointed to be king. And yet still when David's time comes for David to be king, David says, touch not the Lord's anointed. Hello, somebody. I'm not fighting with you. I'm not struggling with you. I'm not going to fight nobody. I'm going to sit down right here and wait until my appointed time. Hallelujah. It's a power struggle. It's a power struggle. And so what we need then is to be in alignment with the will of God. In alignment with the power of God. Alignment with the purposes and the plan of God for our lives. Because God is a God who works according to alignment. Everything must be done decently and within order. Everything must be aligned properly. Everything must be organized according to the will of God. And if you look at how God works, everything that God does is done according to perfect alignment. I'll take you back to the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, when God created the earth, the Bible says the earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God says things are not the way I want things to be. They are out. Out of alignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so the spirit of God is going to move. Lord have mercy. Uh, when, when, whenever things are out of alignment, what we need for the spirit of God to do is to come in uh, into my life and to move. Uh, and I just open the door and say, God, this is out of alignment. Uh, I need your spirit to move here. Hello, are you hearing me? I, I need your spirit to move over there. I need your spirit to shift certain things up. Uh, I need certain things to come back into alignment. The Bible says that the earth was without shape and without void and the Spirit of God uh, moved upon the face of the waters and upon the face of the deep and God put everything uh, into alignment. The seas uh, have got to stay where the seas are. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The hills have got to be where the hills are uh, and the mountains have got to stay uh, where the mountains are. Uh, and the only time the mountain is going to move uh, is when my God says, uh, move mountain. Y'all just miss that uh, because of the power of God. Uh, God says only things that are going to move out of alignment uh, is when I say so I'll shift them 
out of alignment, back into alignment. Uh, and so he moves by alignment. Uh, everything is working according to the structure and the organization and the alignment of God. Uh, the universe, Pastor Makala, is set up according uh, to the alignment of God. Uh, look at the solar system. Uh, everything is in perfect uh, alignment. Uh, nothing shifting. Uh, nothing moving out of time. Uh, down to the precise second. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The sun comes up uh, and the moon comes up uh, on perfect timing uh, because God says I work according uh, to alignment. Uh, nothing is going to move out of alignment uh, because God loves alignment. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Ah, and so when I realize then, uh, I say to myself, uh, I've got to get things back in my life uh, according to the will and the purpose uh, and the alignment uh, with the will of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? When I talk about alignment, Sister Nordia, I, I talk about it from the perspective of divine alignment, meaning my alignment with God's will and plan for my life. It involves cultivating a relationship, young people, with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I cultivate a relationship with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Right? And then I strive, I live, I do everything in my mental capacities, power, and the rest I leave to God to live a life that is pleasing and aligned to the will of God according to the word of God for my life. Now, uh, spiritual alignment understand then that it is not a one-time thing. Uh, that's why we have to say yes continually. <coughs> that's why every, every, every now and then, every morning, you have to say yes. Uh, because the flesh don't die. Because we have to present ourselves as what? A living sacrifice. Because the flesh is there and the flesh, it has its own will, <laughs> its own way, and the flesh will struggle Sometimes I wish I had somebody who knew what I was talking about, that the flesh is struggling against you. Uh, sometimes, uh, Sister Sally, but, but that's all right. Uh, uh, Paul says, the good that I would do, I, I do not. And that which I would not do, that do I do. Praise God. And so I have to constantly get it up and say, yes, God, what do you have for me today? Yes, God, what is your will for me today? Yes, God, I, I choose you again, Jesus, this morning, every day. Amen. Praise God. Because there's always something pushing, always something pressing, always something coming in. I, you know, they tell you trouble don't set up like red. I tell you the devil is going around like a roaring lion. I'm telling you he's seeking and he's not just waiting for, uh, uh, for you to get older. He's trying to get you when you are young. Praise God. Let me just talk to you. That's why there are so many changes in the society. Me and Sister Lisa were talking about it. The other day, I, w I went on one of the, the websites for the library, and on the websites, the books that they're giving the kids now. God have mercy. The books on the sites, they're not waiting for you to get old anymore. They said, let's get them when they're young. I, I tell you, it is a devil, demonic attack. That's what he realizes when hell wants to get to the next generation. He don't wait. He doesn't fight fear. He doesn't fight fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if hell can talk to the kids, we ought to be able to talk to them. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. If a demon can talk to them, the spirit of God ought to be able to talk to them. Hello? Young people, if hell can give you a message through TikTok, <laughs> if hell can give you a message through Instagram, if, if hell can send you a message through your phone, the Spirit of God is waiting for you to say, God, what do you have for me? Yes. I'm waiting, Lord. Speak to my soul. Yes, Lord. And my spirit, praise God. And I say, yes, God.
And, and so hell doesn't want you to be, if I was hell, what I try to do because I know if, you're, if I'm in alignment with God, everything works like clockwork. Timing, everything works like it has to happen when I'm in alignment with God. <clears throat> it must come to pass. <clears throat> and so if I was hell then, because I realized that as hell, I cannot stop the power of God from working. I cannot stop the plan of God that is already settled up. I cannot stop the word of God that is already established. Lamed, lo, oh God, thy word is settled up in heaven. That's what the Bible, that's what the Bible tells me. It's already settled up. And Jesus said it is finished. And the work is already done. So if I'm a hell young people listen to me if I'm going to get you uh, I can't stop God from getting you uh, I can only stop you uh, from getting to God uh, I'm going to move you out of alignment uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you so your ears can't hear uh, when God is speaking um, and your spirit can't receive uh, God help me when the spirit of God is talking uh, because hell doesn't want you uh, to get what God has uh, for you but in the name of Jesus, uh, every ear is going to open. Uh, every spirit is going to be receptive. Uh, everything that God has for you. Everything that God wants to flow through you. Uh, everything that God wants to move through you. Uh, everything that the Lord God, uh, the spirit of the living God, uh, is going to get to our young people in the name of Jesus. Uh, every stronghold, uh, every attack, uh, every warfare against the young people, we break it, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It, it's going to happen. Touch somebody and say, it's going to happen. Amen. Look at the young people and say, you're going to get what God has for you. Amen. Woo! You're going to receive what the Spirit has for you. You're going to get what God has for you. You're going to be who God says you're going to be. You're going to come to what God says uh, you're going to come to. You're going to go where God says uh, you're supposed to go uh, and you're not going anywhere else. Hallelujah. It's a power struggle. It's a power struggle that's happening. It's a power struggle with your life. It's a fight against, uh, that's why you feel moody sometimes. Y'all not hearing me. I, I need the adults to tell us uh, that sometimes when you were young, you were moody. Y'all not saying amen. Uh, when you were little, you were moody. And anything uh, that your parents tried to tell you, you didn't like it, you didn't like it. It's an attack that is coming against you to try to form you. Now, moodiness, that's probably a natural thing. Uh, but what hell wants to do is to use a natural thing uh, to create a chronic problem uh, and a spiritual problem uh, but in the name of Jesus y'all not hearing me in the name of Jesus uh, it shall not come to pass in this house <clears throat> it's a power struggle it's a power play uh, there are some power struggles happening in the scriptures here in Esther uh, power you all know the story there's a power play power play I play the first thing that we see happening uh, sister Makala <coughs> is that there is a, a man called King Ahusuerus, or something like that, however you want to pronounce him. Uh, 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 and he is the king over Persia <coughs> at this point in time. And uh, King Ahasuerus, he's a king over Persia, and uh, he's despotic. It means that he does what he wants to do. He says what he says, and it must come to pass. And nobody can stop what the king says. It's like you all, maybe you know Nebuchadnezzar. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar said something? When Nebuchadnezzar said, tell me the dream. Huh? I don't remember it, but you are the wise man. You are the child. Yeah? Come and tell me what the dream is. Huh? And if you can't tell me what the dream is and interpret the dream, huh? then you are all going to die. That, and the king says that, don't matter how long you serve, no matter how you're good, no matter how much kids you have, depending on you. When the king speaks uh, that you're going to die, nobody can stop it. Uh, and so he's a despotic. And the despotic, he comes in as a power play and he puts on Pastor Makala a feast. Uh, it's not just a regular feast, Sister Nordia. It's a feast that lasts 180 days. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you? Because the man puts his power on display. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He's showing them uh, that I'm powerful. He doesn't just have it for himself. Uh, he invites all the princes in his kingdom uh, and all the princes over the provinces. Uh, he also invites all the 
nobles, everybody who is somebody. You're going to come here and you're going to see uh, how powerful I am. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And sometimes you run into some people in life uh, who want to just show off on you. You're not hearing, uh, God, what I'm saying to you. They just want to show you how powerful they are. They want to show you what they have and they want to show you what they control. And when they say things, how people have to respond. Uh, and so there is this king uh, and he shows his power off for 180 days. That's the first power play that we see. The second power play that we see is that he runs into a woman. Her name is Vashti. And Vashti says, Vashti says, uh, I, I am the queen. I'm your husband. I'm in control. The king says, all right, I've got all my buddies. I've got all my boys. I've got all my brethren. I've got all the men here. I've called them here uh, for a feast. And I want you now, queen, to come and show off yourself because you're beautiful and you're feared to look upon. Uh, but, but Queen Vashti, she says, okay, I'm going to show personal power. The first power that we saw from the king was power and control on a mass level. But the queen says, I have individual power. And, and one thing, we can argue about the queen, but one thing I want you to realize is that she says, uh, no matter what the consequences are, uh, I'm not going to let anybody use me how I do not want to be used. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And, and every now and then you have to realize that there is a certain power that you have to rise up, especially especially as us as Christians, uh, we have to get up every now and then uh, and say, I don't care what comes hell uh, or high water. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. I don't care how powerful the king is uh, or how powerful the kingdom, uh, the kingdom is. Uh, I don't care what they can do against me. I am not going to objectify myself uh, because I know who I am. Uh, and as a Christian, you say, uh, I know who I am in God. Uh, and if it goes against what God says I'm supposed to do, uh, then I'm not going to do it. Uh, I don't care who can do what to me. I am standing against you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You've got personal power. Power, no matter how low you are, uh, you've got personal power, no matter how high they are. Uh, it was personal power that the three Hebrew boys uh, in a similar situation got up uh, and said, long live the king, uh, but we're not careful to answer you, O king, uh, the God I serve. Uh, personal power will rise up uh, on the inside uh, and say, the world is going that way, but the God I serve. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The world wants me to bow, uh, but the God I serve. The world wants me to follow, but the God I serve. The world wants me to do this, but because of the God I serve. And she says, I'm not going to do that, and so she goes, and uh, uh, King Ahasuerus talks to his buddies, and he says, what shall we do? <coughs> and one of his buddies says, well, you can't, you can't allow her to stay. Because all the other women, <laughs> when they hear what she does, they're going to follow. So we have to get rid of her. We have to uh, get rid of her and remove her. Praise God. And that's the second power play that we see there. <coughs> but the third power play that we see is the most dangerous one against the people of God. Because there is a man, no, his name is Haman. And he comes in, or him, and some people call him, and he comes in and he says, I, I'm a high-ranking official. I, I, I have some power, okay? I, I'm not the king, but I'm a high-ranking official. And I want you to bow to me, Mordecai. Praise God. And Mordecai says, I want you to understand that I bow to no man but God. I've got personal power. I've got individual power. I don't care who you are. I don't bow to Nobody. And Mordecai doesn't like it. Because these kind of people, when you run into them, what they want to do is to establish dominion and control over you and over your life. Yes. Run into them all the time, Sister McCallum. Yes. Run into them at work. Mm -hmm. They're not bigger than you, but they want you to, to listen to them. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Run into them at school, they call them bullies. Run into them all over the place. You see them in government. You see them in politics. They say, we need to bow. And when I speak, you need to listen to me. The devil is a liar. Praise God. 
the most dangerous time because they try to the most dangerous kind because they try to establish dominion and control over everybody else. Praise God. Now, now Haman is or Haman he is uh, what we call an Agatai, right? He's from King Agag, Agag. And if you remember, <coughs> King Agag was an Amalekite. And what we see here, the reason Haman is so dangerous is because the Amalekites were the first enemy that Israel as a nation, as a Hebrew, as people coming together out of Egypt ever had. Lord have mercy. The first time they got out of Egypt, the first attack, Pastor McCullough, that came against Israel was from the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. And Sister Makala, the Amalekites attacked them with no reason. I searched for it. What did they do to you, Amalekites, why you would attack Moses and these slave people who are just getting out of bondage, trying to move through your land? There is no reason or rhyme that is listed in the Bible. All we can do is to speculate in the natural, but in the spirit we realize Sister Nordia, there is an Amalekite spirit uh, that just looks at the children of God. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. It's an Amalekite spirit that just sees you and sees that you belong to God. God help me. It's an Amalekite spirit. Uh, you don't have to do nothing. Uh, just going along your way, Sister Nordia. Just worshiping God. Uh, just trying to live for the Lord. Uh, and here comes an attacker. And you're asking God, why uh, am I going through this? Uh, why is this happening? into me. Uh, it's an Amalekite spirit. They've been a, a, an enemy of the Israelites forever. The first enemy they had coming out of Egypt is the Amalekite spirit, Sister Sally. It was the Amalekites then that God looked at Saul and said, Saul, I want you to destroy them. Don't leave nothing. You understand? Nothing, don't leave none of them. Dog and kitty, kill everything. Puss and dog, kill everything. Saul says, I've done what God has asked for me. Praise God. And Samuel says, what do I hear? Like animals, like lambs bleating, what do I hear? And why is there a king? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. That is still alive. And he keeps the king alive. And God says, I've rejected you, Saul, from being king because you have not executed on my command. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's why when God says kill it, when God says destroy it, when God says eradicate it, when God says eliminate it, when God says get rid of that thing, when Paul says the waiter and the sinner that so easily beset you, get rid of it because it's a long-serving enemy. Amalekites come back again and Saul don't kill them. And so God says, Saul, I can't deal with you. Because I don't want to have my people under this kind of bondage, aggression. God help me. Man, I wish I could preach it like I feel it. There's an aggression that just keeps annoying your sister Sharon. Y'all know hear what I'm saying to you. There's an aggression that just keeps coming back. And you deal with it here. And it keeps coming back. And you deal with it another time. And it keeps coming back. It's flaring up every now and then. And when you think you have a breakthrough, here is another problem. The same problem comes back again, Pastor McCullough. After Saul, they come back for David. You remember when David was at, just before he got to Ziklag, and he was there with his men, uh, and here comes the Amalekites. Uh, he goes out to war, uh, and he leaves all the women and the children behind, uh, and the Amalekites come, uh, and they plunder the camp, uh, and they take all the women, uh, and they take all the children, uh, and they take everybody, and David's soul uh, is so distressed. Uh, he is in despair uh, because the people are talking uh, about stoning him. Uh, they're talking about killing David uh, even before you get to the kingdom. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The spirit of Amalekite uh, want to take you out. Uh, are you hearing me this morning? Even before you get anywhere. 
Even before you get anywhere, the spirit of a Malachite wants to cause your problems. And they attacked David, uh, but thank God for David. David uh, grabbed the ephod. Uh, he said, give me the prayer cloth. Uh, he says, give me the prayer shawl. Uh, and David started uh, to encourage himself in the Lord. Uh, Lord have mercy. David started to encourage uh, himself against uh, the enemy by encouraging uh, himself in the Lord. Uh, that's why you have to magnify the Lord. Uh, oh, my soul. Uh, and exalt his name. Uh, and big God up. Uh, because as you start to exalt God, God, uh, the enemy starts to get smaller. Woo, God, uh, as you start to exalt him, uh, your problems start to look like nothing. Uh, the more you beat God up, uh, the more your problems just fade away. Uh, Lord, I wish I had somebody who knew uh, that as you start to enter into worship, uh, the things of this world uh, just start to grow uh, strangely dimmer in the light of the glory and the grace of God uh, as you exalt the name of Jesus. Uh, Every foe and every enemy has got to back up. Uh, Y'all not hearing me. Uh, they've got to back down. Uh, they've got to sit down. Uh, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, and he started to talk to God. Uh, and he said, God, what should I do? Uh, what should I handle? How shall I handle this? Uh, shall I go after them? Uh, shall I pursue them? Uh, will I overtake them? Uh, and God said, David, uh, pursue them. Uh, they're only Amalekites. Uh, you've got a big God. Uh, Y'all not hearing me this morning. Uh, Pursue them, uh, you're going to overtake them, uh, and you shall recover. It was the Amalekite spirit that came against David. It was the Amalekite spirit. He took his plundered his camp. And then in, uh, uh, in, uh, <coughs> in Chronicles, we see where, and Kings, we see where a group of Amalekites joined forces against Hezekiah. We've been talking about this in. in um, Bible study the week before or the weeks before and they came up against him but I thank God for God because God says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord the enemy that you see before you God's going to deal with them are you hearing me this morning and so the spirit of Amalekites is a long going spirit and that's why when you realize that you're fighting a battle, sometimes you're fighting the same battle, Sister Sharon, it looks like something different but it's the same battle are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It's the same enemy, it looks like a different enemy but it's the same enemy coming at time and time and time again and what you'll realize is that hell has this, this way of placing structure, uh, uh, positioning rather, positioning uh, enemies against you. Look at how far they are. I mean, the people are not even in Israel anymore. They're not in Jerusalem, rather. No, they're living in Persia under exile. But yet still, hell has a way of positioning somebody. <laughs> and so the enemies that you're fighting, it looks like it's a different battle, but it's the same. <laughs> same devil, same enemy. And he's not just a problem now for Mordecai, Sister Sally. Praise God. He's a problem for all the Jews. Because he says now, you're not going to bow. And your kind are not going to bow. Praise God. That's why whenever you name the name of Jesus, praise God. It, there, there, there comes a target against you. Whenever you call yourself a Christian, whenever you start to believe God, there becomes a target against you. You get placed into a group of people. And the enemy says, I, I, I don't just want to kill one of them. I want to I, I eliminate all the entire lot of them. And he becomes a problem. He, he, uh, he schemes. He maligns, he goes to the king and he gets a writing that says these people are not going to bow, uh, uh, bow to you or bow. Let's eliminate all of them. The king signs, signs it with his signet ring. And the problem is that when the, the king signs something with his signet ring, not even the king can change it. That's how powerful the king is. And so he signs it with his signet ring. And this becomes a problem, ladies and gentlemen. Not just for Mordecai, but it's a power, a problem for the Jews. Now, I told you about the power plays, Pastor McCullough. I told you about King Ahasuerus. I told you about Vashti. I told you about 
are hammered. But God, when all the enemy is scheming, Lord have mercy. In the background, God's power is still at work. Yes. When, when the enemy is setting things up in the foreground, God is setting up his plan to work in the background. Lord have mercy. When the enemy is putting things in place and putting things in position, God is working in the background. While King Ahasuerus, Sister Makala, was planning his feast where he was going to show off and show all his boys, God had a plan. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you this morning. While Vashti was deciding, uh, and, and you know, when you think about it, uh, why would a queen like Vashti ever, ever go before a king like him uh, and say, you know something, I'm not going to dance before you. Just dance before the man and get it over with. You understand? And just save your life and save your family and just enjoy the kingdom uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, but God was working. You're, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. But, but when their power is on display, uh, God is moving uh, and God God will let people act outside of what is reasonable and normal uh, so that God's plan can work. Uh. That's why when you see people acting all crazy, y'all not hearing me this morning. Uh. When you see people acting all weird, Sister Sally, when they're going on and uh, you can't understand what is going on uh, around them, uh, just leave them alone uh, because God's plan uh, is on display. Uh. While God, uh, while they were planning uh, and plotting, uh, God was working. Uh, God says, I've got a little sister. I've got a young girl. I've got this baby girl. She's nobody. Y'all miss that. She don't come from nowhere. She ain't got no brother nor no father. But when I put my anointing on you, I'm going to put you into the kingdom. Y'all not hearing me. When I put my anointing and my plan starts to work, I'm going to put you in position. I have a plan and I have a plot. And no matter how hell up, is working. Uh, God's going to put me in place. Uh, God's going to put me in position. Uh, I don't care which boss gets there. Uh, I don't care which hater gets there. Uh, God help me. I don't care how the system uh, and the structures uh, and the situations have changed. Uh, when God gets ready, God says, I'm going to put you in place. Uh, and all things and times uh, and seasons and reasons uh, and reasonings uh, have got to change uh, because I am God. Uh, my plan is perfect. Uh, Lord have mercy my plan doesn't fail my plan doesn't falter I'm working in the background don't you know God has a plan you ought to touch your neighbor now I'm almost done and tell them God has a plan it looks like it's not going my way but God has a plan baby Lord shake their hand and say honey God has a plan to get you out of that honey God has a plan to take you out of this honey God is working I know it looks hard I know it looks tight but God really has a plan and when God's plan come to fruition no man no demon God help me no setup no system no structure is going to stop me God says I'm going to put you as the Queen Esther y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you a little girl a little orphan girl a little orphan girl from out of the Jewish nation but yet still God says this little orphan girl you're going to be Queen and I'm putting you in the kingdom for such a time as this. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm trying to tell you I don't want to keep you longer that your time is coming. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm trying to tell you that your plan is coming together. I'm trying to tell you that the purposes of God they scheme and structure and do, did all kind of things. But God was working in the background. I love God. Because while everything is setting up, God is working in the background. Praise God. God still has a plan. I think about the fact that when, when, when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham and said, Abraham, you and the lad, go, you and the lad. I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. And Abraham says, you and the lad, me and the lad go to, wor go to worship. Stay right here with the asses to his, uh, to his servants. He says, we're going to go worship. And uh, <clears throat> when he goes there, he sets up the altar, and the son says, Dad, I see the wood, <clears throat> I see the fire, but I don't see the sacrifice. Watch this. And Abraham says what? God will provide 
himself a sacrifice. In other words, I'm just going along my way. Things look like they're not working out, but God is going to provide. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Uh, it looks like it's not going to work out. Uh, it looks like I'm going to get to a dead end. Somebody's at a dead end. Hallelujah. But, but God says, don't worry. I am going to provide. My name is Jireh. I am the God who opens doors. Uh, I make streams and deserts. Uh, when there is no way, I'm the God who makes a way. Uh, I makes things possible when there is no way. Are you hearing me this morning? And so he says, God will provide himself a sacrifice. He goes through with a plan because he says, no matter what, I'm going to obey God. I'm staying in alignment with the word that God told me from the beginning. Amen. Sacrifice the son. Binds the son, puts him on the altar, about to strike him. He hears the voice calling out, Abraham, do the lad no harm. He says, look, there's a lamb, a ram, caught in. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you, Lord. Sister Nordy, I wish I could preach and tell some people that there's a ram tied up. <laughs> there's a ram that's being held. Uh, there's a ram uh, that is uh, it's just waiting for you. It's just locked up for you. It's reserved for you. It's selected for you. It is held for you. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story. I wanted, I was buying a car. I wanted a car. I wanted a blue car. All the cars blue. Praise God. I wanted a specific car, a blue car. I don't want any other color, but I want blue. Specific car, just like blue. Just me. The priest used to wear blue, by the way. Praise God. So it's biblical. Yes. And, uh, and I ordered a car, and I said, it's going to take long, blah, 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 blah. I said, all right, fine, I'll wait for it, because I want blue. Praise God. And uh, it's going to take X amount of time. And when... Like a week after, it's going to take uh, like months and months, and you're not getting it. You're in the lockdown pandemic, no parts, all kind of foolish. You can't make a car. I said, all right, but the car needs to change. I need a car. Praise God. I said, all right, Father, I'm going to put this in your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, when one week passed, somebody called me and said, listen, we have a car that matches exactly, exactly the configuration that you've ordered. Blue on the inside. Specific color blue on the outside, specific color on the inside, specific with everything that you've asked for. This person, ladies and gentlemen, ordered the car months ago. <laughs> you not hearing what I'm saying to you. They ordered the car months ago, and suddenly they have a decision that I don't want this car anymore. They said, Mr. Gordon, your car is waiting for you. Can I just tell you something? God has a ram in the thicket. It is locked up. It is right there. It's just waiting for you. Praise God. I use it a car as, as an example, but, but it doesn't matter what the ram is. Praise God. A ram can be a job. The ram can be a husband. The ram can be a what? The ram can be anything. I'm joking. The ram can be anything. That the ram, a ram can be a wife. Waiting. Touch somebody and say, God has a plan. God has a plan. So Mordecai, now he's working. He's, he's there. He's, she's in distress. Because, Mar because Haman says, all right, we're going to kill all of you all. I'm not just taking you out. I'm taking out all the Jews. I'm almost done. I'm taking out all the Jews. Praise God. Y'all know the story. I don't have to keep you long. I'm taking out all the Jews, Pastor McCullough. And Mordecai is in distress. He says there's a locked door. The problem, the Bible says that Mordecai, he goes out into the city. He goes out into the middle of the city. Not just into the city. Into the middle of the city. And he starts to cry. He starts to weep. He cries. He starts to mourn. You know, there's a certain kind of problem that you can deal with it by yourself. But then there's a certain kind of problem when you don't even care who sees you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. There's a certain kind of problem where you just give up now. It's just 
done. This is the end. Uh, there's a certain kind of problem. You just holler and you just ball uh, because you know that this is the end. It don't matter. I don't, I don't try to. I know I'm a king. Uh, I, I, I know I work for the king. I know I'm in the king's palace. Uh, I know I have some things about me. I know some people looking up to me. But my God, this problem, I don't even need any more dignity. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Forget about dignity. Forget about pride. Uh, I'm hollering after God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? There's a kind of problem, Sister Sally, where you push your way through the crowd uh, and say, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Uh, there's a kind of problem where you say, crying after Jesus. Uh, and even when the disciples are saying, send her away, uh, you're still crying after Jesus. Uh, even when Jesus says, it is not fit to give the children's bread uh, to the dogs, uh, you say, yes, Lord, but even the dogs, uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. There's a kind of problem where you forget about yourself. Uh, there's a kind of problem that pushes you uh, uh, closer to God uh, because you say, God, uh, just as I am, uh, I need you right now. Uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. That's why when Sister Lisa was telling me, I'm going to sing the song, Lord, I need you. Uh, oh God, my God, I need you. Uh, I need you now. Uh, the same God then, uh, I need you now. Uh, God of Moses, uh, I said in my spirit, I said, I didn't say to her, but I said in my spirit, this is the spirit of God uh, because you know uh, you come to a point in your time uh, in your life where you say God uh, I need you uh, mm. I need you now, God. Uh, if you don't come through right now, uh, I don't know this is the end. Uh, if you don't give me a breakthrough, uh, this is the end. Uh, if you don't open a door, God, uh, this is the end. Uh, if you don't make a way in the desert, uh, this is the end. Uh, if you don't help me, God, uh, if you don't hold me, God, uh, I'm going to lose it. Uh, I'm about to lose it all. Uh, who am I talking to this morning? Uh, I don't know if you've ever been there, uh, but sometimes you get to a point uh, in your life uh, where you don't care about nothing else uh, but you just come before God uh, and you're crying out uh, I don't care who sees me I don't care who's criticizing me I don't care who wants to talk uh, let them talk uh, if you were God uh, I would worship and cry out to you uh, but I've got to cry out uh, to my God uh, because he can help me and that right early he can hold me he can keep me through this uh, he can give me a miracle he can open a door uh, he can block the enemy. He can stop every demon. Uh, when my God speaks, uh, something has got to happen. Uh, God, I need you. Uh, the Bible says uh, he goes out into the streets uh, and he's crying out aloud. Uh, he's not crying to his neighbor. You are not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm not crying to you. Uh, I'm not worshiping to you. Uh, I'm not preaching for you. Uh, I'm not praising you. Uh, I'm praising uh, you. All can sit down there uh, and act like you're so good. Uh, and so nice uh, and so you know you all, sometimes we all sit down like we're scholarly and we look over with glasses uh, like professor you are not hearing me and you look like Judge Judy and you look so righteous uh, and you look so good uh, and that's fine uh, but there's another sister Lord God Almighty she said God uh, help me this morning uh, oh Jesus uh, there's another brother that says God I need thee uh, oh I need thee uh, every hour I need your help uh, here comes Mordecai. Uh, he walks through the city and he's walking the town uh, and he says, God, I need you. I don't know if you've ever been there where you say, oh, God, you don't care if the kids see you now. <laughs> you don't care if hobbies see your sister now. Do you? You, don't buy, you forget about makeup and all of them things that... <laughs> Oh my God, that make you look nice. You don't care about lipstick and all of them thing. The hat and all of them thing. All when the hat fly off, praise God. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. When the wig gone over there, you say, I'll get the wig later. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. You say, right now I need help. I need the master. I need the maker. I need a touch from God. Woo, Jesus. And only Jesus can help me. And Mordecai is acting like a madman. But madness to you is good before God. Because God sees him. He goes to Esther. They go to Esther and they say, Mordecai's acting like he's mad, crazy. She says, Hatash, go get him. Uncle Mad now, cousin Mad now. Go get him, bring him in. Because now she's a queen. She don't have to go herself. <laughs> she said, servant, Sister Sally. Lord have mercy. You know, you know when, you, when you can send somebody. <laughs> 
she said, Hata, she said, go, go, go get him, bring him in. And uh, he comes in and he tells her everything that is going on. And the problem is, Esther now, Esther was a little girl, young girl. Mordecai grooms her to be queen, takes care of her, put, put, puts her before the king. The king picks her above all the other girls, all the other beautiful girls. And he picks her, and Mordecai is there. Mordecai is happy for her, he leaves her, you know, she's queen now, she's doing her own thing. And he comes to her and he says, this is what the king has done because of the man Haman. He's written a, a writing that cannot be turned back, praise God. Nobody can stop it. And she sa he says, you need to do something. She says, no, I can't because if I go before the king and he hasn't stretched out his hand and called me, it could be the end of me, praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? She forgets about individual power. Watch this. She doesn't use her individual power. And three things that Mordecai does. Mordecai says, lady, woman, girl. You see, every now and then, Sister Erica, we need to have a Mordecai in our life. Amen. A Mordecai, Sister, uh, Sister Norda, that will say, lady, woman, girl, young man, boy, whoever you are, think not. He tells her three things. Number one, you need to realign and readjust your thinking. And every now and then, Pastor McCullough, we need somebody that says, think not like that. The first thing he says to her is that you need a mental realignment. Mental realignment. He says, don't think within yourself that you are going to escape. He says, the way you've been thinking about the problem is not a right way. Praise God. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. It was a mental alignment that it was required of. The Bible tells me in Romans 12, verse 2, uh, Pastor Makala, that we should not be conformed to this world, uh, but we should be what? Transformed uh, by what? The renewing of my mind. Uh, and every now and then I need to renew my mind. I need to rethink how I'm thinking. I need a shake up. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I need a shifting in my mentality. I need to think differently. I need to stop my mental processes and my thought processes and say, This is not how God, our Lord have mercy, wants me to think. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be what transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Uh, and then he says that you may prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, every now and then we need a mental realignment, uh, a mental shifting, uh, a mental changing, uh, a mental transformation. Uh, every now and then we need to realign ourselves uh, so our thoughts can align properly and flow with the thoughts of God. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying to you uh, this morning? Uh, every now and then you need a mental alignment. Uh, Sister McCullough, a mental alignment uh, will get you out of the hog pen. Uh, the prodigal son was in the hog pen, uh, but the mental alignment uh, and reshifting said, uh, how much of my father's servants uh, have more food than I have? Uh, I've got a mental alignment. Uh, it was a mental alignment, Pastor McCullough, way back in Eli Elijah's time. Uh, oh God, when the Ten, uh, the, ten, the lepers uh, were there uh, and they said why sit we here uh, Lord have mercy until we die. Uh. You know, sometimes uh, you have to look at yourself and say, you know something, uh, and no devil wants to kill me. And you know something, I know I'm going to die eventually, but not here, uh, not now, uh, and not like this. Uh. I'll see you all later. You have to have a mental alignment, uh, some realignment. Uh. Sometimes you hear people talking about, Lord God, me I got dead in, a, in a this situation. Lord God, me I got dead now. Uh. The devil is a liar. I'm not going out like that. Uh. You're not hearing me. Uh. You can't make me think like that. Uh. You can't readjust my thinking. Uh. God said with long life, uh, y'all not hearing me. Uh. Look at that man. Uh. His end is going to be peace. Uh. I expect a peaceful end. Uh. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Uh. Lord have mercy. I don't want to keep you long. Uh. But every now and then you've got to have uh, a mental shift. Uh, a mental realignment. Uh, a mental adjustment. Uh. And Mordecai comes in number one. Uh, and he says, don't think like that sweetness. Uh. Don't think like 
like that beautiful uh, I know you're gorgeous uh, but you're thinking wrong uh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you I know you're dressed up queen uh, I know you're in the palace uh, I know you got all of these servants uh, but your mind is wrong uh, y'all not hearing me this morning uh, every now and then you, you, you need somebody who look at you and say I know you're in the big job uh, I know you got the big car uh, I know you got your family I know everything is going right uh, but your mind uh, needs to shift Number one was what? Mental realignment. Number two, the second thing that he said to her was that don't say, he says to her, <clears throat> don't hold your peace. He says, don't be quiet. He says, you need to change your approach to what you're saying. <laughs> you need to change your approach to what is happening. You need to not be quiet. Praise God. You need to open up your mouth and speak what God says. Praise God. I, I don't let them intimidate you. Don't let them intimidate you from saying what you know is right. There is a spirit, Sister Sharon, of intimidation that is happening out there. Uh, 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 it's especially prevalent with the younger generation who are trained on the internet. They call it the cancer culture because as soon as you say something that they don't like, a whole bunch of them, <laughs> they jump down on you and they say, ha ha, you're this and you're that. And they try to give you a popular opinion. But the people who have the word of God, y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. The people who know what the word of God is, the people who know what God says in his word, uh, how can you remain silent? He says, don't hold your peace, Joshua. He says, don't be quiet. He says to her, you need to go in and say something about this. First thing we have to do is our mental realignment. That's in my heart. The second thing is my speech. Jesus says, Sister Erica, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why the first thing I have to do is to get it in my heart. David said, thy words have I hid <clears throat> in my heart <clears throat> that I might not sin against you. I'm almost done. Number one was a mental. Number two was a speech. Number three, he says... <clears throat> Excuse me, you need to understand what your purpose is. He says, you came to the kingdom for this purpose. We, we, we know it as you've come to the kingdom for a time as this. That's how we say it. But, but what he's saying is that you've come to the kingdom for a specific purpose. I know you're pretty, but you've got prettier girls out there. Yeah, I'm not hearing what I'm saying to you. I, I know you're good looking, but you've got gooder looking girls. Yeah, I'm not hearing what I'm saying to you. I know you're handsome. You think you're in here because you're handsome. You've got more handsome people. I know you think you're bright. I know you think you've got your education. I know you think you've got all of these things. But God has you here for a specific purpose. Yeah. You've got to realign your purpose. I'm almost done. But we've got to realign our purpose. It was a realignment of purpose that Jonah had, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 when God had Jonah, you know, God is so interested in purpose that God will, uh, God will prepare a fish. <laughs> God, God will get a fish and hold the fish and say, fish, I want you to be here at 1 or 1 p.m. because there's going to be a man who is going off course uh, and I'm putting you right here. They're going to throw him overboard. Uh, they're going to cast lots uh, and God didn't just prepare the fish. God put the fish, Sister Sharon, at the right place at the right time. Uh, as you're hearing what I'm saying to you and God says, I'm so interested in your purpose uh, that I'll prepare the fish. Uh, I'll Get the fish to hold you uh, and keep you for three days uh, as long as it takes uh, until you realign with your purpose. Are you hearing me this morning? Look at somebody and say, realign your purpose. Nebuchadnezzar had to realign his mind and say, God, I know, know that you are the God of heaven. You're the most high God. Praise God. I, I know, know that you are the only wise God. 
I'm almost done. I know you're tired. I know you want to sleep. I, I'm almost done. But sometimes we have to realign our mind. Amen. Sister Sharon Nebuchadnezzar says, Now I praise the Most High God. Why? He lost his mind, Pastor McCullough. Yeah. And you know something? I don't want to have to lose my mind for God to change my mind. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I, I don't want my mind to get crazy and corrupt. So that God can change it. So then, those three things he says, I need you to change. I need you to shift. She says, all right, Mordecai, thank you for talking to me. Thank you for the word. Thank you for doing this. Here's what I'm going to do. I want you to call a fast. I want you to pronounce a fast for me. Get everybody to fast. Proclaim a fast in all of the, all of, all of the Hebrews. Get everybody to fast. And I'm going to go in. And I'm going to speak to the king. And, and she said, well, if I perish, I per if it happens that I perish, I peri I'm just going to go in and I'm going to talk to the king. And she goes in and she starts to talk to the king. And the king stretches forth his scepter. I'll give you three more things and then I'm done. Number one, when we start to align with uh, our purpose, align with the plan of God, align our thinking, align our speaking, align our mentality, time will align with us. Yeah. Everything that we have at the part, uh, for, for that particular point in time will come back into alignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Once we align, Pastor McCullough, with the will of God, I cannot miss my time. This is important. I'm almost done. Just stay with me. This is important, Sister Nordia, because we don't want to miss our season. And things move in seasons, Joshua. And what will happen is, if you miss your season, you know what happened when I first came to Canada? I didn't know that you had to uh, fertilize the lawn at a particular point in the season. And I went to the guys and I said, guys, you know, uh, is it the right time? And he said, you're, you're asking me about fertilizing in May. You need to fertilize March, April. He says, you have missed the season. He says, you can't have as nice a, 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 a lawn, a garden as you could if you had fertilized in May. You know what I did next year? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Next year, I decided I'm not going to miss my season. And when I'm aligning to the will of God, to the purposes of God, I'm like a time clock. I'm ticking according to the season of God. I may not see Pastor McCullough like Joshua, the sun stands still. But I'll see everything start to shift up. <laughs> I'll see things start to get quicker. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'll see start to, things start to happen quick. Things will start to work out. Things will start to move. Number two, powers will align. Powers will align. There's no telling what the king could have done. The king could have said, you know something? This woman, who is she? Who tell you to come into my presence? You know I'm the king. This man is a despotic monarch. Can do whatever he wants. But God had sent her on a mission, praise God. The people had fasted. The people had prayed. And the king has got to stretch forth his scepter. Powers will align. Powers will align. Number three, two, powers will align. When we align with the divine will of God, powers will align. And finally, all things, all things, impossible things will become possible. Impossible things will become possible. What do you mean, pastor? The king had made a decree that said, every Jew uh, shall be destroyed. The king said it. It cannot be turned back. Praise God. And, more, and Haman is laughing now because Haman is saying, I've got them now. There is no way out. I don't know if you ever reached a dead end where it looks like there is no way out. Where even you in your own mind says, yes, it looks like the enemy has finally got me. Mordecai says, uh, Haman says, not only will I destroy them, uh, but this man, Haman, I want to hang him on some gallows. Haman creates some gallows. You all know the story, and he puts them, I'm almost done. He puts the gallows out there, and he puts them there, and he puts them on the gallows. The queen goes into the king, and she said, listen, this is what the man has done for us. But God was working. God's plan was working. In the night, Pastor Makala, uh, King ha 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 Sirius has this dream. <coughs> And he's, he can't sleep, rather. He can't sleep. 
And he has this dream and he's thinking, what has been done for this man Mordecai? He's been good, but has anything been done for this man Mordecai? Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, just out of nowhere. He just starts to think about this man Mordecai. When, when you start to align with the will of God, people will, you'll just start to get favor. You'll just start to have open doors, goodness. You'll, you know, just favor will just start to, you'll just say, God, I, I wish I had a parking lot. I can't, but I walk far and, and a parking lot will just open up for you. Yeah, a parking spot. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. You, you say, God, I can't, but I wait, just let the line be short. And, and somehow at midday when the line is, the line just is short, praise God. Or, or even if the line long, somebody just come and take you out of the line and say, you there, miss, come. I, I, I'm open, just come, let me help you. God, favor will just come and, and grab you, praise God. Amen. And the king says, what has been done for this man, praise God. And, 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 he, and, and he said, you know something, I want to honor somebody. Lord have mercy. I wish I could tell you. And him and his thinking, he's going to honor me. Nobody like me. He's going to honor me. And him and his walking in, thinking that the king is going to honor him. And the king says, I want to honor the man Mordecai. You know, when God gets ready, he, he prepares a table before you are in the presence of your enemies. He will anoint your head with oil and even your cup I'm done, I'm done, praise God uh, 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 she looks at him she looks at the king and she says, king, this is what he said he's going to destroy him he says, who has done that? she says, this man, wicked man Mordecai the king says, alright, I can't turn back what I've said hey man, I can't turn back what I've said but here's what I'm going to do I'm going to give you the power and the authority that anything come against you. Lord have mercy. God, Sister McCall, I wish I had more time to tell you that God says the enemy has power. The devil does have power. But Jesus says, Lo, I give you power over all. I don't have time to tell you that, 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 that on the day of Pentecost, I don't have time to tell you that God endued you with power. I'm done. Praise God. And the same gallows that he set up to hang him and on, the king says, you go hang on your own gallows. David said, let the trap that they have set for me, let them fall in their own pit. Let their own snare catch them. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Let the things that they have set up against me, let their own words entangle them. Uh, praise God. Uh, and so I just need to align with God, Pastor Maka. I just need to align with what God says. Uh, I'm not fighting mean. Uh, I'm not fighting wicked. Uh, I'm not mean-spirited. Uh, I'm not doing tit for tat. Uh, I'm not answering them how they're talking to me. The only fight I need to fight uh, is down on my knees. Uh, I'm fighting the good fight. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. There's a fight called the good fight. Uh, and it is a good fight of faith. Uh, I've got my sword. Uh, I've got my shield. Uh, and I'm fighting. I'm finished. Praise God. The good fight. Young people, when you align with God, God will make even those who are your enemies your footstool. And who don't become footstool? Become at peace with you. And who don't want to be at peace with you? The same trap. <laughs> They're going to fall in the same trap that they have set for you. Praise God.